Christian Bastian, that's me, Christian Bastian, Bastian, probably Bastian, um, asks, does this shop slash cave have any battle scars from previous projects? What I love about the shop's, the patina of use that is in the shop is the floor here. And uh, you can take a look at the floor and tell exactly where I spend the most amount of time. Um, what's funny is, is that in front of the mill is without a doubt the part where the paint has been worn away the most, and that's just my sneakers. Here in front of this table, the paint is all gone, but it looks much dirtier because I'm using, I don't know, I roll and wheel around on this one more than I do over there. Um, I love the evidence of use that a floor shows. I love the, um, in Grand Central Station, which has for like much of its time been one of the most used train stations on the planet, um, there are these iron stairs everywhere. Uh, and the stairs are visibly like half an inch lower in the middle than they are at the edges. And this is from 140 some odd years of foot pads on there. So just think about, I mean, you could probably do the math. How many, how many angstroms of material does each shoe pad remove from the iron so that it is visibly lower? Dude, that shit gets me so excited. <laughs> um, Ah, Frank's VR says, do you have any suggestions for temporary shop dividers or curtains and work surfaces that are easy to move and fold away? Well, so I love stainless steel prep tables. They're often used in restaurants. Um, they need, they frequently need some triangulation and I actually did a whole one day build here on Tested where I took this workbench and added triangulation and goosed it up so it was much more stable. Um, so for me, everything's on wheels that I can put on wheels. Um, but as far as curtains, welding curtains. Welding curtains are fantastic. Um, they're made in many different form factors and some are like retractable, like a reversed wind sh uh, uh, window shade. So you pull it up and attach it like a, like a trade show poster to a top thing. Um, they also sell them with, with, with grommets in them so you could hang them like a shower curtain, but they are meant specifically to protect other eyes from the light of a weld. And they, uh, they're made of vinyl, so they're not fireproof, but they are rated to be able to take the sparks from a welder. So they're perfect for dividing stuff up in a shop, especially for welding. Um, but I have used them in shops before for other things, just like you stated, just like room dividers. Aaron Lennon says, I'm going to build a shop, including a couple of bays to park and or work on my Jeep and a model train layout, 20 or 20 by 20. Good God, Aaron, this sounds like a dream come true. And room for a shop, woodworking, model trains, and working on vehicles. Dude, how much, how big of an area do you suggest I need to make a fully functional shop area with good flow work area? Okay, that is a very broad question. And the first thing I would say is, I can't possibly help you. I don't know what tools you have or the layout of your space, but uh, I do have some thoughts about that. Because I joke that, I mean, this space right here is 15 by 30. It's very small. It's very small. Um, 450 square feet, something like that. Yeah. Um, well, if I'm on camera and I'm doing math, it's by definition, I'm getting it wrong, but I'm going to go with 450 square feet here for the main shop area. And um, the fact is, it's not enough room but it's perfect for just little old me. If I have someone else working here, boy, it gets close very quickly. Um, but I like to joke, I like to point out that if you gave me another 3,000 square feet here, um, I'd probably keep my tools. This is some gummy sticky from a movie prop I was cleaning up yesterday. Anyway, if you gave me another 3,000 square feet here, I would probably keep most of my tools in the same kind of arrangement because I like the speed. I would just have more workbenches or God bless America, a space to work on my Land Cruiser right there. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, 
I would probably have a dedicated machine tool wall and dedicated woodworking wall, but like 450 square feet is plenty for me for this full complement of tools for the most part. Uh, yeah, and there are some other questions here about, about designing a shop around yourself. And, you know, <laughs> one of the one of the ways to consider a shop is to picture yourself working in it. Picture yourself operating the shop and and then once you've built the shop realize okay here's the other thing I want to say yeah realize that it is not a plan it's a process. You make a plan to put your tools into a room in a certain arrangement, and that is a plan, but it's not etched in stone. And the moment those tools are laid out, if they don't work, start moving them. Uh, there are some things you can only determine once you are in the space with the thing. That's real. Uh, so I'm a big fan of constantly wondering, okay, how is this aspect of the shop working out for me or not working out for me? And what can I do to make it better? Uh, if you have a woodworking area and other areas, uh, you know, you probably want some real dust retrieval and you can do that with tubing and hoses, but you could also do a lot of dust management just by curtaining off parts of the shop. Um, at M5, Jamie's woodworking tools were all in the same room so that they would gather their own dust and not deliver it to anybody else's area. Um, yeah, it's a process. That's the biggest thing I want to tell you. You're asking a question that is like, what is the best plan? And the plan is come up with a plan, but that plan is going to change. No plan survives first contact with implementation. All right. Uh, Michael Fortner, here's a very practical question. Michael Fortner is tired of pulling, connecting, tripping over extension cords. Oh yeah, I feel ya. Do you have a strategy for running electricity around a garage shop on a concrete slab so it is within say two meters of any locus without having conduit running all over the floor? Is feed from above any good? Yes, feed from above is plenty good. And all of my extension cords I have uh, pick up point there, I have a pick up point there, I have a pick up point there, and I have a pick up point there. Yeah, I think those are the four. And I use them all, all the time. Um, it is absolutely great to hang as many pick points for extension cords as you want that are retractable. They are super useful. You can often find old ones that are really nice and robust for a very reasonable price on Craigslist. This is the kind of thing that's not sexy uh, and they last a long time. Uh, I've got this beautiful ancient one that came with the cave, this uh, air, air, air retractable, <sighs> retractable air. <laughs> uh, and I love it. And I love it specifically because of its age and it's very quiet. Uh, yeah, Craigslist is a great place for that. Um, yeah, you know, running extension cords all over the place is, is a genuine hazard. You gotta be careful about that. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.